Now, the U.S. is stepping up its sanctions against Moscow over the Ukraine conflict. And it comes as America looks to restore its relations with Cuba, admitting that its restrictions policy against Havana has failed. Artis Ganesh Chikan joins me now live from Washington, D.C. for more on this. Well, Ganesh, what do we know about this bill at this point? Well, Marina, apparently President Obama signed the bill Tuesday night without much fuss, without any announcement and any reports in the media confirming this. And I learned about this this afternoon, asking a question at the State Department. Take a listen. About, uh, about the sanctions bill that, that President Obama is about to, to sign, mm -hmm. as I understand. Um, it he signed it yesterday. Uh, well, this bill sort of gives the president the authority to impose further sanctions against Russia, but the U.S. president may or may not do that. With the previous rounds of sanctions, that was the executive branch imposing sanctions. That was direct action that was different. But a bill authorizes the president to take certain measures. For example, the bill also authorizes the president to send $350 million worth of arms and military equipment to Ukraine. I asked the State Department spokesperson whether the U.S. is going to do this, and she said the U.S. is not currently providing lethal weapons and that to Ukraine and that um, that policy hasn't changed. So maybe the White House will put this bill in a distant drawer somewhere and never remember about this. But based on the previous rounds of sanctions and the statements that we hear, the White House is pursuing a course of sanctions and isolation toward Russia. Well, again, certainly that's not the only statement on sanctions to come out of the U.S. today, is it? Uh, that's right, Marina. This week, at least one other policy of sanctions and isolation has come to an end. The White House announced this Wednesday that it's changing its policy toward Cuba because it hasn't worked. Take a listen. No other nation joins us in imposing these sanctions, and it has had little effect beyond providing the Cuban government with a rationale for restrictions on its people. Today, Cuba is still governed by the Castros and the Communist Party that came to power half a century ago. This is, this is a historic moment, really. For 65 years, the U.S. has been waiting for sanctions and isolation to bring about regime change, and they haven't. The news comes the same day, the same time, as we hear about ratcheting up pressure on, on Russia. And here's what the State Department says about the difference of, of those policies. Take a listen. On Russia, President Obama said um, he doubts that the sanctions will change President Putin's mindset, but he hopes that they will influence politics inside of Russia. Mm -hmm. Has the policy of sanctions and isolation changed politics inside of Cuba? Well, I would say every country is uh, hugely different. Um, and in Russia, uh, with Russia, I would say that these uh, sanctions have been put in place because of the actions, the aggressive actions Russia has taken in Ukraine. They have it within their power to bring an end to these sanctions. And there's long been an off-ramp. Uh, Cuba is an entirely different country with an entirely different set of circumstances. And we look at each country and decisions we make with policy differently. Well, of course, Russia and Cuba are very different countries, different circumstances. And in the case of Russia, Washington really hopes that sanctions and isolation will work. All right, Gina, thanks very much for bringing us this update. Gunnish Khan reporting from Washington, D.C. for us.